An all new at five, a major organized crime bust. 23 people under arrest now accused of stealing guns and cash. Today, police revealed four organized crime groups are wreaking havoc. From aggravated robbery to kidnapping, burglary, and more. Let's take a look at this. New pictures from court documents in this case. These are a few of the people who have been charged. And investigators say the money, tens of thousands of dollars, is all stolen. Welcome to this episode of the Sunny and Stag Show. Hey, yo. Sunny. I'm back, brother. How have you been, man? Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm you. on a cruise please. ship. I got the uh, the window <laughs> behind me, see? Please, please. You're too much. You're too much. Thank you very much, everybody. I had fallen asleep. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys are great. Hey, William, full green light. All right, we're back. We froze. So I got up at seven. Ah, did we? Because we didn't freeze here. Yeah, froze over here. I was. I had like, a cup of coffee. Or I was sitting down watching the news, and I crapped out until you you uh, sent me that text. And I'm like, "What are you talking about? Earthquake? Holy shit! It's all over the place." Yeah. So I was in my back porch smoking a cigarette just chilling all of a sudden it starts moving like this i'm like what the fuck i look up the windows are shaking and i'm like the whole fucking house is moving and i'm moving it's like Holy that shit. yeah it was it was crazy how about you guys did you feel the earthquake out there hit here too in hudson valley connecticut yeah, i feel it my neighbor's gutters fell off his house Long Island, I talked to people in Long Island, they felt it. Staten Island felt it. Hey, Dave, what's up, man? Did you feel hey, it out Dave. there in Boston, Dave? I didn't feel anything. I'm at work. I called my mom, right, to see if she's like, I don't feel nothing. <laughs> of course you didn't. You don't pay attention <laughs> to anything. <laughs> she's like, what are you it's talking fucked, about? It's fucked up, though, because you got this coming. You got we got the uh, the solar eclipse coming in a couple of days, and it was just a big earthquake where in Taiwan. Your port's moving. <laughs> it is an earthquake. Yeah, we got big waves outside. Oh man, <laughs> I know. Like, what's going on with this world, man? Like, now that there's a hey, Joey, what's up, man? You felt it out there? Yeah, My Joey said his whole was building shaking. was shaking. Wow. Yeah, we, I told you I was in uh, Times Square and Joey pulled up on me. <laughs> I was live on Times Square in Times Square. Joey's like, Is that what's right? up, Yeah. He came right up to me. Ah, that's funny. Cool. Yeah, it was cool. I closed I love my that. eyes. I, I love that new opening, by the way. Oh, thank you. Oh, my really God. It is, it is, not to use that, overuse that word, but it's epic. It's I'm perfectly done. On it. Yeah, with F the order on strong. And then at the end, FBI, open up. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys like that intro. That's great. We got a bunch of things to talk about today. Uh, insane stories in the news. So one of them is a police officer moonlighting as an outlaw's motorcycle club member. So he is the sheriff. Holy Christ, really? San Bernardino County deputy has a double life with a motorcycle gang. I think it's a motorcycle club. I think they use that term a lot too much. You know, it's a motorcycle club, and everyone in the club is not a is not a criminal. Let me just state that they they try to put all these people in one bracket, and that's not the case. Right. Some law abiding citizens that are in the club, like, it's, but they hate them. You know. But listen to this, man. California County has paid $1.1 million. Oh, no, no, this is a different one. All right. Uh, for years, San Bernardino Sheriff Christopher Bingham, Bingham had two jobs, law enforcement in the Inland Empire and owner of a gun store. Uh, but authorities on Thursday said Bingham had more than two jobs. He had a double life that was complicated and illicit. He's accused of being a member of the local Outlaws Motorcycle Gang 
and committing numerous firearms crimes in connection with the gang's enterprise, including stealing a shotgun from the sheriff's department. The case against the deputy is a result of months-long probe by gang and narcotics detectives who uncovered a cache of 160 weapons in the lawman's oh. home, including stolen shotgun. So he stole a shotgun from the sheriff's department. From the property? From the property room? Yeah. Oh, my God. And it says uh, Binghamham, 45, was detained on Thursday afternoon um, in 29 Palms home, and he was booked around 1 p.m. In the county lockup, he's held in lieu of five hundred thousand dollar bail and is scheduled to appear oh. in court on Monday. He could not be reached for comment. No shit, he's sitting in a cell, <laughs> and it's <laughs> unclear if he has an attorney. The actions of this deputy are alarming and inexcusable. He not only tarnished his badge, but also undermines the integrity and capabilities of the entire department. No shit, because you guys are a gang. I, I feel like the police are the biggest gang out there. Um, the wow. sheriff's department said in a statement that criminal behavior will not be tolerated and will have placed him on compulsive, compulsory leave effective immediately. The investigation into Binghamham began in January when detectives at San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department confirmed that he socialized and rode bikes with members of the motorcycle group. Um, the group's name was not publicly disclosed, but, it, but it's the outlaws. Um, on the weekend in late March, investigators came with the highway patrol, conducted a traffic stop of Bingham and two other gang members. And, uh, during the stop, investigators found him carrying a loaded handgun, unregistered firearm, and he was arrested March 23rd and later released. During the subsequent search of Binghamham's residence, authorities found 160 firearms, including automatic assault rifle with an attached grenade launcher. As Holy well as Jesus. As silencers and motorcycle gang paraphernalia. Authorities also said they found a shotgun that was allegedly stolen from the sheriff's department. Binghamham was charged... Thursday with 10 felony counts, including possession of a machine gun, possession of a short barrel rifle, grand theft of a firearm, possession of a stolen firearm, participation in a street gang, uh, all 10 counties carrying an enhancement um, for being done with association with a gang. For years, Binghamham had a side business running a gun store. So, you know, he probably supplying people with weapons. Oh did it say if he was wearing colors? Uh, I don't know. I'm, it's not done yet. Um, the business uh, sh shuttered uh, in June 2021. A message posted at the source Facebook after being unable to maintain any kind of inventory on his own personal finances over the last year, trying to keep the doors open. Um, but we'll be permanently closing its doors. He's referencing a shortage on ammunition and firearms. Yeah, probably because he's keeping them all for himself. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good six-year run, but all the drama that has caused the last few hoarding issues hit a major um, artery, just like thousands and thousands of small businesses. So I guess they're keeping ammunition away from people so they can't stockpile it. He so, was probably making up fake sales so he could keep the guns. Crazy. Watch, th watch that next. Uh, so that year, former customers and vendors brought him to court for unpaid bills and failing to provide firearms that he had purchased. An ammunition vendor claimed that it was owed just under $2,000 for ammo it had delivered. And another customer filed small claims action, approximately $6,000 order that was canceled and that Binghamham had kept the money in a business account. And both cases were dismissed. In 2017, Binghamham's personal and professional lives merged. That year, former Marine machine gunner, uh, Raphael, Arkins 
was accused of killing his online roommate partner, 32-year-old Christy McKissick, and her mother, Renee McCaff. Uh, at Ankin's 2019 trial, Binghamham testified, arriving at the scene of the slayings, also selling Aikens a 45 caliber handgun just weeks before the double murder. Oh, boy. So the cops sold him the gun, dude. Oh, my God. So this is a developing story, and I'll bring you more information as it's provided. But this is the guy. He's got a weird, he's got a weird looking face. Yeah, he does. He's doubling you know he as an outlaw motorcycle club member. Pretty wild. It is. Maybe he looks like a KKK guy also. Probably. Right? He's got that look. We got a lot of people piling in. Yeah. Hey, Anthony. Agnostic. What's up, man? My cabinets were rattling. Nothing here, thankfully, on the West Coast. That's where it should be happening. What do you mean? Right. <laughs> you, you guys can keep that type of shit. I thought I was safe from all that. I didn't feel anything. And I work in Willow Grove, PA from Philly. They felt it, but not me. Crazy. I Trust me, I felt it. Like the whole house was shaking. It was swaying back and forth like this. I didn't feel anything out here on the cruise. Yeah. <laughs> was the water <laughs> rocking? No, nah, it was a pretty calm. At first, I thought I was having an acid flashback from the 80s, Joey says. <laughs> the whole building was shaking. William, what's up? Thanks for joining us this morning. <laughs> Big boy. Big boy blue. What's up? Full green light. Damn it, Mandy. How are you? Damn it, Mandy. My bro almost lost his job with the school board because he... He got his picture taken alongside a Hell's Angel. It went viral, even on oh, Demon's wow. Row. See, like the police hate these motorcycle groups. There's a lot down there in Florida, huh? Down here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're everywhere, you, right? But you never hear anything bad about them. No? Nope. Up here, you nope. always hear bad shit about them. Yeah, not down here. It's like, oh, there they go. Yeah, they go some. Up here, it's like, they're gang. They're this, they're that. They're doing this. They yeah. always point out the bad. So there was, um, they were doing a Christmas toy drive out here. And the police officer from the, one of these towns said, if they're involved in the toy drive, we're not being involved. He hates wow. them so much. Tell me that's not discrimination. That's terrible. That's terrible for the kids that you're supposed to be helping. Yeah. Paul, what's up, man? How are you? Make sure you guys go check out the Patreon. The Patreon is bumping with content. I'm going to be uploading every single day. I'm loading Patreon with content. Go subscribe to Sonny's Good. Patreon, too. He's got uh, where he sings songs and things, right? Yes, sir. Thank you much. I'm just starting to learn how to use Patreon. It's pretty easy, though, right? Once you're learning... Once you learn it, I was I was having trouble at first. I'm like, damn man, I can't figure this out. I mean, but, just even up uploading a video is, is is easy, and you can you can tweak it and yeah, I, yeah it, mine, mine kept saying title needs a title, but it wouldn't let me put the title for some reason. Oh really? Yeah, it was like, and then they said it ha that happens sometimes if your cache is full, your cache. Oh okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got the. Uh, I just finished the 35th show that I had posted up there since I started in January. So I'm doing like There's three shows a week. Unreleased Ramundi interviews on Patreon. Go check them out. They're Ooh. Funny. Yeah. Unreleased. On on your Patreon? Yeah. No, I'll go watch it later. Yeah, There's I've been subscribing subscribe to you since day one. Yeah, $3 for um the regular tier, and it's $5 for the exclusive tier. I'm going to keep it low. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, I'm not going to charge no crazy amount. There's no reason for it. So what yeah, else? Joe, what, what is Molino? He's $15. Yeah, 15 That's a little steep. Hmm. Shit. Everything is steep nowadays. 
Do you see really nice around, new, yes. new interview on uh, Gagnon Camp? Camp Gagnon? What, what is with that guy? What a fucking pothead that guy is. The hair. <laughs> the hair. The way he's, all he kept saying is, oh, wow. Oh, wow. I don't know <laughs> if he even smokes pot, does he? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> and then he does his own commercials and he's going, hey, even if you do have a good dick game, you got to say. What was to, that all about? What the weird, heck yeah, was that? Yeah, that was very weird. Very. I have. And he I kept have a, saying I, it. He kept yeah. saying it. I have a good dick game, but I use Bluetooth. Who? Please shut up. <laughs> yeah, it was very cringe, cringe worthy. I did like the interview though, because it was more like a conversation. It, I thought it went pretty good. Take you know, notes. He didn't push Vlad. God, but he asked right. Take notes, Vlad. Right? There's yeah, no reason to exactly. bring up all this other shit. Yeah, so yeah, that's right, Paul. I want to watch that end of uh, the unpublished Ramon Day. Yeah, go check it out. I have a whole yeah, bunch of them. I have about 35 interviews I did with Ramon D. 35. Wow. Yeah. That's, a, probably, that's awesome. I probably have the most Ramon D footage out there. With you? Do, yeah, we used to do interview yeah. every day. Every day, he would tell me stories. Really good ones, too. Well, that's what we'll do. We release it one a week. Yeah. I'll Let everybody come back. Out. Yeah, he tells he tells great stories. Yeah, he does. He's dealing with some medical issues now, too. Yeah. Yeah. Same like you. Yeah, crazy. Yesterday his was his heart's crazy been messed thing. up ever since that virus hit. Me too. I swear all these problems with my heart are from that. From that vaccine. Nah, I don't yeah. say that word. <laughs> Avoid oh, yeah, that word. Right. Avoid that. From that poke. Yeah, Did I say poke? Yeah, yeah. Hey, from, Emerald. From this fairy dust that they sprinkled on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Emerald I never had, a, never had a hard problem. Never. My heart has always been, thank God, to all the other shit I went through. That's what carried me through it. Yeah. And now, now my valves are leaking. Now I got AFib because the, the injection they gave me for to fight the cancer sent me into an AFib. And what, the eight vials of blood yesterday I had to give them. What? Did yeah. you feel all dizzy when uh, yeah. you had to give all that? Yeah, I was like I was like I was <laughs> uh doing some special K. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah, didn't was, you say you were involved you were involved with some study where you had to do that too? Yeah, I I I, I developed a disease called CRPS in 2015. Uh when I was working in a hospital, I was wrestling with uh, with a patient that was out of control. And uh, like, yeah, like thank you, <laughs> similar to Puffy, uh, yeah. The guy was the guy was like 6'3, and you know, I'm definitely not, whatever. But uh, it's uh, CRPS is it's like a fibromyalgia, but on the McGill pain scale, it's the number one pain thing. So, what so, does it do? Uh, does it ache on your in your body or something? Yeah, you know, it, your your body and your brain. Uh, are are off off kilter, so when I hurt I hurt my hand wrestling with the guy, nothing happened to it, but my brain says something happened to it and it blows up. So my this is even a little swollen today, yeah, but my up. hands blow up like balloons and my feet and my ah oh, it's horrible. So we tried all this different stuff and the doctor says we're gonna do what you want to try a ketamine infusion. It's five days in a row. And uh, see if it helps at all, you know, with the pain and everything. Well, let me tell you, man, <laughs> I was, I left the planet Earth for a week. It was unbelievable. I was flying the Starship Enterprise. I was, I, my fingers were like E.T. I thought I was tapping nurses on their shoulder, like my fingers were three feet long. And then Wait, on, so, on the left. So that's an illegal substance, right? Like on the street. Yeah. And stuff. On the so street, how, yeah. That's what was the process of them giving it to you? Because they had found out that this special K works for a lot of people. It does something to short circuit these things in your brain, and after it's done, when it can, when the infusion's over, it's your body's okay again, or your brain is okay again. But it didn't work for me. But the, <laughs> like, I, I need last, more. I need more. I, uh, yeah, I give me more, more, man. 
my last day, as I'm getting up to leave, there's other people in the room too that are going through the same shit. And they all start clapping and cheering. And I was like, what the hell was that about? What are they mad at me? Or like they're happy I'm leaving? And <laughs> the nurse says, you don't remember? I said, no, remember what? She was, you did a whole Frank Sinatra concert from your bed. I don't remember one note singing that whole thing. She said, I did about six, six or seven songs laying from my bed. That's funny. That is unbelievable. So what do, do they, so you had Yeah, that's right, I'm right, right there, absolutely. You had something wrong with your hand, right? It's, it goes everywhere, it spreads through your body. So, do they uh, give it to you in an IV? The ketamine was through an IV, yeah. What was it like? What was the experience like? What, did you fall asleep or like what, did you like pass out? Were you conscious? No, I just kind of you know went into another uh, another dimension of of life. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah, it was uh, it was a hell of an experience, and then because it didn't work. Uh, they wouldn't allow it anymore because the doctor wanted to do it again. And uh, the uh, insurance people said, no, no, no. If it didn't work, no use trying it again. I was a little sad about that. You know, I wanted to go. I wanted to see how far I could go into space on my spaceship. But yeah, it was very strange. So did you of hear course, about Frank the CADA? The CADA are going to be coming out of the ground by the trillions when the, the what the cicadas cicada cicada, cicada. yeah they're oh my god the you... by the millions when the when the um eclipse happens holy shit i god almighty and they've been hibernating in there since 1800s i hate those things aren't those like the stink bugs they don't want to... <laughs> they make those noises they're about they're about like this big and they fly around they fly right at you and but they don't do anything but destroy the uh, the, the trees and and the grass and foliage and shit like that but they are ugly ugly aggravating animals so there's big things going they're like on. my ex in laws <laughs> yeah it's like all my exes they look like cicadas <laughs> Here, I'll show you a map of where the cicadas are going to be coming out of the ground. It's pretty wild. So it says uh, a map of two periodical cicada broads, broads, broads have been oh observed God. across eastern U.S. and shows areas in which they are likely to emerge in the next few weeks. Experts are predicting that the two populations, which have been hibernating under, underground for over a decade, will appear at the same time, carpeting an area of southern Wisconsin and parts of the Carolinas with as many as 100 trillion bugs. Trillion? Yes. Cicada oh, frauds God. develop over a number of years underground before burrowing up and out all at once. They are then active above ground as adults for a matter of weeks before laying the next generation and dying off. It's like an entire alien species living underground, underneath our feet, and then some prime number of years they come out and say hello <laughs> man this year we're the... going to get two broods and they're going to emerge at the same time holy shit. experts say the broods uh which operates a 13-year cycle and brood xx3 which arises every 17 years, are set to appear simultaneously. Oh my the coincidence God. was the last recorded occurrence was 1803 is the last time this happened. It wow. is not expected to occur again until 2076. I mean, look at, look, at the, look at Michigan and, and uh, Wisconsin. Yeah, they, I mean, these are going to be popping out all over the ground. Like, oh, oh my God. Insane. 
and nothing in Florida. Ah, I like that. <laughs> boy- no, nothing in Connecticut. We're good. <laughs> now we just got to worry about earthquakes here now. That's crazy. Well, you know what's really crazy about that? How widespread that was felt. Yeah. You know? I thought it, wasn't I like- thought, I thought it was a big truck going by. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it wasn't. Wow. I hope no, it doesn't cause any uh, tsunamis or anything because I'm out here on the water in my in my cruise ship. Earthquake rattles New Jersey. Here, let's check out this newscast. What does that say? Oh, Tewksbury. Are you ready for this? We'll take a look at this. emergency person now but you wouldn't want to call just to report it because it fair use reported and it has fair use cbs fair use <laughs> we are going to be uh, <laughs> we are going to uh definitely deal with it so kevin we were waiting to get some phone for some folks on the air hey uh, you come on over here kevin come on over here this is just assistant news director. Come on in over here. So this guy drunk. Did you feel it? I did feel it. We, what did it feel like? We were in the building and it shook everything. No one knew what it was. I've never felt anything like that. You've never been in an earthquake Never before? been in an earthquake. So I've been in multiple earthquakes. I immediately knew. I said, we're having an earthquake. Wow. And that's why I walked down in. We had one years ago here. So uh, uh, I, I remember. I remember it. But I was in California. I worked in California. So, oh, it is knucklehead. Yeah, okay. Yeah, stuff. I just oh, yeah. TV He's a too, jerk off, way. huh? <laughs> That's the yeah. way we roll here. He's drunk. So, and we're going <laughs> to we'll check in with some other folks, too, to see. So you are not imagining things. See? You're thinking, all these people that are texting me, no, you're not imagining things. It was an earthquake. And again, sometimes... <laughs> Earthquake that just hit Taiwan, and you think about the ring of yeah, fire. that's that's the what happened when I heard the earthquake. earthquake. Never expect a six or a seven. I think I would have done the same thing. Hey, Big John, and you know, get a new subscriber there. Big John, a fixed scale. Big John, thanks for subscribing. I appreciate you. Goes up, it's 10 times as bad. Hey, William, yeah, this guy's annoying to even hear, huh? He thinks he he thinks he invented the weather. This guy, he thinks, he thinks who the fuck he is, huh? Does he know who he's talking to? Fucking weather expert. Come on. What does an earthquake got to do with weather anyway? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> he shouldn't even be talking. Send his ass home. Some people said when they felt it, they, they thought Ruggiano fell down. He probably did. <laughs> <laughs> so today, I got a clip of... We got, we got the video of the Iceman. Ooh. Richard Kuklinski. So what's your thoughts on it? Do you think he was a Gambino family hitman alongside John Elite? You know what? I tell you what, when he when he came out with his book after right after his arrest and his book, I believe I believed a lot of the shit he was saying. I did too. How many people he killed and the way he did it so calm and I got no remorse and everything else. And Nobody in the five families ever did any. They said never heard of him, never did anything with them. He said he was working with the DeMeo gang and uh, doing uh, doing hits for them. They were paying him to go out and do hits. And he doesn't believe in using guns because they're traceable. So he would either poison them or strangle them and then put them in a freezer and not release them until months later to throw yeah. off the timeline. Uh, crazy shit, man. But he did murder some people. And- he did. He did, but I don't think he was working for the Gambino family alongside no. uh, John Elite. I think Elite was on his own. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But John would have said, "Who the fuck is this guy? Who the fuck is who the fuck are you? I'm the hitman. Get out of here." Yeah. yeah. Let's check it out. This is an exclusive interview with the Ice Man. Oh. Your arms out. Yeah, I killed him. 
On May 25th, 1988, Richard Kuczynski was convicted of multiple murder and sentenced You could bang those two cops' heads together and you'd run out of there, right? This ended 30 years of cold-blooded killing by a master criminal police called the Iceman. Richard Kuklinski is one of the most dangerous criminals we have ever come across in this state. He murdered by guns. He murdered by strangulation. Didn't his friend have an ice cream truck too? Putting poison on victims' food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I watched that. Um, did you watch the show they did on him? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's on Netflix, right? He uh yeah, he was very abusive to his family, his wife, his kids. Yeah. He did all of this at the same time while exhibiting a normal, placid family existence. His wife, his children uh, were uninvolved in his criminal activities. Yet, uh, we are faced with uh, evidence, convicting evidence of uh, numerous grisly murders. Yeah, yeah, a lot of these people, legends in their own minds. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. exactly what they are. He said he killed a couple of people. He was robbing them. He's a legend in his own mind. Yeah, yeah he claims to kill have killed over 200 people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. 200. He he beat out a light. He beat him for the record, huh? <laughs> They're all in the top spot. Don't worry, a light's numbers will go up. Oh, I was just gonna say <laughs> his numbers change every day. He doesn't know how many he killed. You'll get some three. Text. Two or did three you see, of those. Did you see the Sunny and Stack show? They had some guy on 200 hits, killed 200 people. What? Oh, I got to up my numbers. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Iceman tapes. How many people did you kill? What an approximate guess. What an approximate guess. <laughs> Too Watch his face. Look at his face. Like, approximately, we'll go with more than a hundred. More than a hundred. See that? They all start low. He can name dates and locations, I too. <laughs> I don't. It doesn't bother me. Bottom at all. No remorse. I don't have a feeling one way or the other. <laughs> Buddies with Kuklinski. Mr. So I think if I had a choice, I wouldn't. The following program is based on 17. The Derringer in each pocket. On a gun on my ankle. A bigger per gun just in case. And a knife. And it all depends how it came about. I don't know if he got blocked, Big John, but if he did, he probably did something wrong. Or one of the other moderators blocked him. I didn't block him. We like Salvatore. Okay. Yeah, Salvatore's good people. Maybe a different moderator maybe blocked him. I'll get him out of there. Tell Salvatore he's good over here. Used a shotgun. I'll check right now. Stop light or something like that. Or... I had a red light. We were following this fellow. <laughs> a red light. Came alongside of him. <clears throat> and shot the shotgun and took his head off. He never saw the green light. It was a sort of shotgun. It was very, uh, as a matter of fact, when it happened, it surprised me. I expected the, uh, the man to uh, die, but I, it really surprised me when it, it when it took his head off. So oh. it was a, <laughs> I didn't expect. Richard Kuklinski is not a serial killer. He's not a drug crazed. Wild man running around with a machine gun. He's not a person that is driven by perverse uh, sexual desires. He doesn't drink. 
he doesn't gamble. Uh, all of these things, um, which many persons that are involved in killing and murders uh, often are motivated by. Richard Kukwinski instead uh, is nothing more than a predator uh, on human beings. Uh, his motivation is greed and his method of murder is very varied uh, and very extreme. That's his, that's his weapon of choice right there. Cyanide, right? Yep. I'm looking for Salvatore right now. I'm trying to you find could, him. Uh, this block list is huge. <laughs> it's pretty big. You could, uh, there could, person could take it, for instance, a person could be in a bar. You bunk into them, possibly uh, by mistake, or say you were intoxicated, spill a drink on Why them. did they say that? Bunk. They bunked leave. into him. I bunked right. into him. Why did they say that? And if they spilled the drink on him, he would kill him. Yes, Emerald, I did see that. Yeah, they bunked into me. <laughs> oh, man. Everybody just looks around, thinks you're drunk, or that you just had an accident or something. And uh, meanwhile, it's soaking through their clothes, into their pores, and into their system. And eventually, They'll die. He's not on the block list. I've been in a restaurant where I don't see him. We were eating, and the guy went to the bathroom. And uh, uh, when I was in the bathroom, we put a little boost in his. You know, uh, uh, Big John. If if he made a comment someone else's show and they reported it or something, it'll make him not be able to comment for a certain amount of time. But he's not on the block list here. I just checked. So. He's yeah, got over here. And thank you, man. Appreciate you. That's food. And uh, he was rushed to the hospital after that. And uh, he died. And they buried him. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what they put on, what they attributed to his death to. But, you know. It wasn't homicide. Somewhere, and I don't know where, he picked up on something. Oh, wait, here it is. Here it is. Salvatore. A good, way, a good quick him. way to kill somebody. It's such He's a good, good way to kill somebody that that's the gas that's used in gas chambers. That's the guy. <laughs> that's the famous. Uh, what's yeah, it that's Baden. Yeah, the famous Undertaker, right? Yo, Big John, yep. I found him. I took him off. So let him know. He's good. I mean, cyanide in a gas fed form, which is similar to cyanide in a in a, in a being eaten form. Kills hey, very Salvatore, quickly. what's it's up, very, man? It's faster than arsenic, faster than strychnine, and it's hard to detect. One of the other moderators might have did that, man. I might take every, all the moderators' wrenches away and start over again. Um. If the person, if it isn't specifically looked for, he murdered. Sometimes months apart, years apart. He used different methods. Um, he would go so far as to uh, plan in his crimes uh, the actual deceit of law enforcement. Uh, by that I mean he would, on occasion, uh, murder someone, uh, cut their body wrap them in layer after layer of plastic bags and material, and then deposit the body many, many miles from the murder scene. Right. What is it to dispose of something? You throw it away. You throw it anywhere. It all depends. Throw in the dumpster, throw it in the trash. <laughs> Yo, Shinobi, what's good, man? Shout out to the way you. He, the way he's so calm about it is why I think I believed him in the beginning. Yeah. You know, he was like yeah. very matter of fact. Yeah, I did this. I blew his fucking head off. And what? I know. I believed him too at first. I be Listen, when I came on the internet, I didn't know about A Light and all these people. I thought they were being honest. I didn't know that they're full right. of shit. Right. Like, Absolutely. I didn't think someone would come on here and embarrass themselves by lying about shit. I didn't mm -hmm. think that was possible, but it is. 
And with this, with this hump, he'll admit to 200 murders. But anytime they asked him about abusing his family or, or anything else, he would get a little, it was the only time he would show emotion. Yeah. I never, yeah. I, I loved my family. I never touched them. He beat one of his sons to death in what? front of the family. Yeah. He did? To death. Yeah. They throw him in the trash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you don't want it found, or if you want it found, if you want it found, it doesn't matter, you just leave it there. If you don't want it found, you could take it somewhere. You can eat it. <laughs> you can eat it. You can, yeah. you can dice it up and give it to everybody as steaks. <laughs> yeah, there was really people doing that. Oh, yeah. Putting it on potluck. <laughs> there are, there are strange groups throughout the world that pay up to upwards of $100,000 for a plate of a human dinner. And they go, and they fly to wherever it's going to be. And then they That's sit wild. down, and they, they know they're eating a human body. And they pay a hundred grand to do it. My God almighty. That is wild, That's the devil. Man. That's the devil in full force when that shit goes on. Make sure you share this video and tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's get back to the content. You could bury it. You could. Uh, what do you do with his son? Put it in a big drum. Put him in a big drum. You put him in a big drum. Blood dripping out his eye. No problem. I told his other kids and his wife, "You ever say a word about that, you'll go the same way." Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> but that he won't admit to. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, man. You're the one that always says that too. It's been three days since I've been able to say. Gene slowly applies the Vaseline to John A. Light and the <laughs> Iceman. Huh? <laughs> Have it crushed. You leave it in town, put it on a park bench. <laughs> Yo, did you see the guy that was walking down the street holding someone's leg, eating on it? What? Yeah, it's on video. So this person passed away from unaliving themselves. And got somehow it. this guy got the person's leg off and he's walking down the street holding it, eating it. There's a video. I'll put and it was, on Patreon. It, How about that? I'll yeah, do, do that. A, I'll do a reaction video to that video and I'll put it on Patreon. I'm going to do a lot of crazy things that you cannot see here. Matter of fact, I'm going to. And it wasn't a that. joke. No, I'm sorry, I didn't mean real. to interrupt. No, it's for real. It was a real leg. It was the guy's yeah. real leg. Hold on, let me. Let Holy me. God! Here, almighty. I'll play this and I'll find the I'll find the article and I'll play it in a minute. Let's, let's oh watch God. this and I'll find the article. I mean, you know, you can put it anywhere you want. They found a few people sitting on park benches. I'm sure. As a matter of fact, I know they have. <laughs> no ketchup. <laughs> All right, March 28th. You guys ready for this one? Nothing. Hard. Yeah. Pause the ice, man. No right. worries. It's got blurred out. It's blurred out. Nothing. Hold on. Getting it ready. I don't think about it. I think about it. It's hard for me to tell you. Right? In order for me to be able to tell you when something happened, I'd have to think about why, when. If I think about it, It would wind up hurting me, so I doubt. I don't think about it. Yeah, he thinks about it. He's lying. Mm -hmm. If I had a choice, and of course you have already said to me, we all have choices. <laughs> Maybe we do. At the time, I didn't seem to have one. But if I could have, I would like to be different than what I am. I would have liked to have been different one than what I was, yes. Yeah, you want to be a Gambino family hitman along with your friend, <laughs> John Alito. Yep. All right, so look at this. Huh? What's that in your hand there, buddy? You hungry? Just a snack, huh? Here's a picture of him chomping on it. So. Oh, my. Get out of here. Uh, drug <laughs> yeah, listen to this. California man was arrested by eating a severed human leg in broad daylight. 
Footage shows a man gnawing on a severed human leg oh. on the side of a busy street in broad daylight. Shocked the nation this week. Um, drawing speculation that the national drug crisis is to blame. The video taken in Wasco, California, shows 27-year-old uh, Rosento tells picking up a leg, seemingly biting it, and then waving it around on the sidewalk before police arrived. Imagine being the cop that arrives to that one. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> All right, so this is what it says. It says, uh, full arrest details have not been made available. The internet is ablaze with theories about potential involvement with drugs currently dominating the illicit drug supply, especially oh uh, fentanyl. It says forensic toxicology reports uh Dr. Bruce, who worked with police on the horrific cases in Florida that involved disturbing people eating other people's faces, uh, were told to understand the instinct to suspect those types of drugs. But he said meth, crack cocaine, and bath salts would actually be most likely culprits. Uh, given the stimu stimulants can be bring a powerful state of psychosis, um, or total severance from reality. The other drugs like fentanyl, which is a sedative, cannot. So fentanyl won't do that to you. However, if fentanyl is combined with other drugs, it can enhance the effects on them. Uh, that is horrified so onlookers watch as the man bent over and sniffed the leg before reportedly biting into it and then waving it around in the streets. It says he was trying to share it. According to Dr. Goldberg, cannibalistic behavior is not categorized in medical lecture literature. It is so unusual that is is not something that could be really studied. <laughs> he added, when you hear about these cases, sometimes you think immediately. If a drug or drug in, were involved, stimulants such as methamphetamine, crack cocaine, for instance, are most likely the class of drugs that would cause this. Bath salts, a type of stimulant drug uh, that people either snort, smoke, inject, are now infamous for links to two deranged attacks in which people were eating other people's faces off. Oh, Dr. Goldberg said that in the psychotic state, eating other people's flesh may be seen as a necessary for self-defense or survival if the person is convinced that they'll survive otherwise or that's convinced that they will starve otherwise. In this altered state of mind, um, the dopamine's responsible for survival boosting behavior like eating can exhibit psychotic delusions because of their that. effects on the dopamine levels stimulants are most likely the cause of these psychosis in uh, a state in which one becomes separated from reality and is prone prone to deranged or violent behaviors potentially escalating to cam cannibalism insane man Wow. Now, if you guys want me to do a reaction video to that video, just let me know. And I'll do it on Patreon. I say, yeah, because Luke Joe says zombies. That's exactly right. Oh, my God. It is. Jose. What's up, Jose? I love how they say people on the street were, were shocked, and 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 but they had time to take their phones and take pictures. I would be. Wouldn't, wouldn't you? You want to whip your phone out? And then he's waving it around. Anybody want to bite? I'm yeah, willing to share. I share. Yeah, you you want to bite? <laughs> Anyone got salt, pepper? <laughs> oh, my God. Where'd the body come from, though? I think it says it in this. Let me see. You want to see a picture of the guy? This is the guy in uh, Miami. Fresh that was fish. In the other guy's face. <laughs> Fresh meat on the deer. He's going to love it in prison. 
LB Green says fresh fish. <laughs> All right, this is the guy who ate the face in uh, Florida. Uh, the mother of the brother, Rudy Eugene, nicknamed the Miami Cannibal, would never be capable of, act, uh, of attacking another person and chewing his face off. Wow. Uh, it says ate the guy the, ate someone's face off in Miami on bath salts. Oh my God. Crazy. So it says, <laughs> dude, why do people always message me while I'm on here? It's yeah, like, me too. Jose, ends, Jose Bonaparte said he wanted a foot long. <laughs> Yeah, he wanted a foot long. He got one. He said in <laughs> He's a new cases, spokesman no for Subway. <laughs> Yo, he said in similar cases, uh, cases he's familiar with, no drugs were involved. What? The underlying behavior led to cannibalism has no association with drugs. One of these cases involved a 31-year-old Rudy Eugene in Miami who tore off pieces of a 65-year-old face. Eugene was diagnosed schizophrenic, was later found to have used marijuana, not bath salts. Who smokes pot and goes and eats someone's face off? Well, you get the munchies, you get the munchies. I mean, you can't help it. All right. In another case, this guy, Austin Hafford, a state of Florida student who was 19, killed a couple and ate one of their faces. He was found to be incompetent to stand trial <laughs> you think <laughs> and he's walking the streets today no he's probably in a fucking mental institution there oh, were yeah. many tests done by the state and the fbi over the course of a few years because drugs evolved over time there could be drugs in someone's blood today that we've never seen before wow mm. so yeah i never like, heard of it Crazy, man. All right, let's get back to the ice, man. It would be better. It would have been better for me. I would have liked to have had a better outlook on life. But I can't change yesterday. Richard Kuklinski was born April 11th, 1935, in a low-income public housing project in Jersey City. His father was a brakeman for the railroad, and his mother worked in a meatpacking plant. Yeah, a meatpacking plant! Right. What, was, what was his mother packing, bro? She worked <laughs> in a meatpacking plant. His father was a nasty alcoholic abuser, beat the fuck out of everybody in the family every day. Yo, we got another story we're going to talk about in a little bit after some of this plays, but we're going to talk about the $30 million heist that was pulled off in LA during the Easter weekend. Wow, I don't know. Million dollars. Did you hear about that? No, I did not. Yeah, look at this. They, they went in through the roof. Merchant, merchandise or cash? All cash? cash? All cash. Wow. You cut a hole right through the side of the building. To Steve get stolen in. As much as 30. No, they went in through the roof. That's all they got out. $30 million dollars out. of money in a money storage facility in Los Angeles. $30 million. Oh, dollars. That's got to be Inside job. 100%. They have them on video Inside. and everything. No alarms went oh, off yeah? or anything, man. Felt a little, little tremor. No alarms here. either. Yeah, uh -oh. like, come on. We just, what happened look, to the port, behind man? Me. We, just, we just sank. Look at the water. It's on the floor yeah. now. <laughs> it just, you just sank, man. I <laughs> no, knew I shouldn't have gotten on this boat called the Titanic, too. It was definitely an inside job. What happened? Did it fall? It was, Yeah. It was Garda. Gata was the armored car company. Yeah, it was a money wow. store. Of course, the country they, they've been involved. They've been involved in a few questionable uh, disappearances of money. Yeah, it's because it's inside jobs. 
Correct. It's so, so easy to figure because, out. Uh, he felt like. Look at this guy. Look at his father, man. He looks like a psycho. Doesn't he? He does, right? Yeah. Look at that mouth. All his teeth are all crooked from eating faces. Probably. <laughs> to get my attention, I guess. He would think nothing of coming in and smacking you. Yeah. Basically. Back in the boat. All right, it fell again. <laughs> You're back in the boat. Oh, I thought it was hanging. It's on a little stick. It's on a little on a little yeah. tripod. He just Am I back in, in the boat? Yeah, there we go. yeah, you're back in the boat for now. <laughs> Why don't you move it over and put the other <laughs> view on? Why don't you move it over and put the other view on? Yeah, well, for now, we're almost done. Reason whatsoever. I'm going to paint the wall green. And my mother was cancer. <laughs> she would destroy everybody. She thought I took too long to do something. She didn't hesitate to give me a swat here and there. And oh, poor boy. Here, let's get to the part where he's talking about working for the Gambino family, all right? Yeah. <laughs> and John got That's right, here, Anthony. Right? Here we go. Here comes the Gambino personal, family Personal hitman for DeMeo. Place in New York. And we were sitting there for a while. We got to where we were going. We were sitting there for a while, and a man came in the distance. He was walking his dog, it looked like. So he said, All right. Take this guy down. I said, Which, what, which guy are we talking about here? So he says, The man walking the dog. I got out of the car and I started walking towards the man. The man was walking his dog just like a regular guy. As he passed me, I turned around and shot him. Freddie and Roy pulled up in the car. I got in the car and we. Roy DeMeo was in the car. <laughs> And Roy told them, go out and shoot that guy walking the dog. You believe that? No. And you know what? When I first heard about it, I would have believed it. I'm in touch so he, with someone who was in Roy DeMeo's crew stealing cars. I'm going to ask him if there was any um, ever association with this guy. I'm going to ask him. Matter of fact. I would bet if DeMeo wanted this guy gone, he would, and he was that close, he would have done it himself. I'm trying to get this guy on, man, but there's, uh, you know, stipulations with things. But right, he'll, right. he'll come on eventually. He was with the DeMeo crew. It's crazy. People haven't even heard of this guy yet. But they will. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Drove away. And that is how I got involved with Roy, with doing things like that. Let me fast forward to that part. The hits and Kuklinski executed them without question. He wanted this guy uh, taken care of, uh, but he wanted to talk to him first. So uh, when I got to the place, I asked the man for the money. <coughs> He didn't have it, and Roy would just have to wait until he got the money to pay him. And that was that. He'd have to wait. I, so I said to the man, I said, well, you have to then talk to him. He wants to talk to you. So I dialed the phone number, and uh, he got on the phone, and I said, here you are. It was all right. Well, let me get to where you said uh, talking about Paul. The next time we do this, if we do, you got to see if you can find the part where he talks about how he got into an argument the with DeMeo. Where he's talking about what? He gets into an argument with DeMeo. Yeah. What, what he says 
that he said to the Mayo face to face, that's when I knew he was full of shit. Hundred percent. I can't find it. There's some that's of this right, LB Green. Some of this I can't play on YouTube. Seeing if it would work. Oh what yeah. Some of it I can't play. It's That's too right. Too graphic. Too graphic. Too graphic. You know, throw them in the trash. <laughs> I don't. I don't believe he's on any wiretaps or anything. I'm gonna look into some shit. I'm gonna find evidence out. Convicting evidence. He's not. No. No. Numerous grisly murders. In 1986, the ATF and the New Jersey Organized Crime Task Force set up a roadblock outside Kuklinski's home. I wonder who told on him. Johnny A. Light? <laughs> <laughs> I know it. Did you see Johnny A. Light's uh, boxing skills? Well, yeah, I saw that last night. Yeah, check you know, I fell out. asleep early, which you know we were talking. I wake up to see this. I was like, what? Where is it? I don't know. Know. In his gym. I see people walking by the door. (laughs) (laughs) No, man. Look at that. Look at that form, huh? Wow. Look at that form, just like, just like a chick. He's he's punching with the top nut, the the bottom knuckles, and not the fist. Hey, he's a professional boxer, you know. He box around a few. <laughs> what can he say? I got to be honest. If I was a judge, I'd give that round to the bag. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> the bag, we win, yeah. <laughs> the bag got it for the title. Yeah, full green. He was uh, the Ice Man was very big in uh, you going into porno movies and you know with his camera and then making his own. So he was pirating them and then making a lot of money. And that supposedly is how he got involved with DeMeo because when DeMeo found out, he went to him for money and said, "Hey, for bootleg videos." Come of, on. Uh, he, was, of porn, he had a yeah. multi-million dollar operation stealing cars. The guy that I know worked for DeMeo stealing cars. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot more to his story, but I can't really get into it because we have an agreement. So, but no, hopefully, but when you hopefully speak to him, he will come on. Ask him about Kuklinski. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him right after we get off here. Okay. But yeah, you guys are all great. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys go subscribe to Sonny's um, Patreon channel. What's, what's the name of your Patreon? Uh, Sonny Grasso. Sonny Grasso. Sonny Grasso. That's something about uh... And Make sure you subscribe to my new Patreon channel. I'm going to be pumping Yeah, with all content. exclusive content. Ramundi galore. If you want to see some good Ramundi stories, go subscribe to Patreon. Lots of good stuff on there. I'm going to be dropping content constantly, too. I'm going to go live on there, so we'll I'll do some lives. I'll have Sonny come on there and hang out. So make sure you yeah, guys absolutely. come through. Check it out. And then maybe one day next week we can do uh, some clips of that uh, interview with the pothead with Molino because he was pretty funny. April 1st. Damn, you, you, did, you did subscribe since the beginning. Who, me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, from day one. I right, appreciate That's right, it, brother. Man. Make sure you guys check it out. And uh, have a great day. Hopefully there's no more earthquakes, man. Yeah. If you guys like this content, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you could get our videos every time they drop. And if you don't like this content, too fucking bad. Start your own podcast. I appreciate it. And that. remember... Don't be a bitch. Or a Kuklinski. Or a Kuklinski. Hi, brother.